Welcome to the New Line course, Building Advanced Admin Reporting in React. In this course, we will primarily be exploring the use of a query builder. A query builder is a component that facilitates the visual description of queries or filters using rules, also known as conditions. The most common use case for a query builder is to work as a user-friendly front-end for a database back-end, but it has other uses as well. This course will guide students to the creation of a simple query builder application using the React Query Builder library. The application will connect to a custom API with the SQL database backend. Students will learn the basic configuration of the library, as well as advanced customization and feature addition. To get started with the course, students will need to know the basics of using NPM to configure and develop JavaScript slash TypeScript applications, and have some basic Git and SQL knowledge. We will be using a PostgreSQL database for the backend and React.js for the front end. Let's take a look at the application we will, we will be building. You can see the query builder at the top with the ability to add rules and groups of rules, plus a data table at the bottom with the results of the query and a line graph with summary information. To get started building the application, we'll need to bootstrap it with Create React App. Start by making a myapp directory and changing into that directory. First we'll do make dir myapp. Now I've already done that one, so we're just going to cd into myapp. Next, initialize a git repository within that directory. We'll do that with git init. And again, I've already run that command, so I'm just going to backspace over that. Then run the npx command to generate a new React application using Create React App in a folder called Client. We'll use the TypeScript template and force the use of npm since that's what our remote server will use. So we'll do npx create oops, React App Client template TypeScript and use npm. Now, I've already run that command. It takes a couple of minutes to run sometimes, so I'm just going to backspace over that and cd into the client directory. We do it this way, my app slash client, to get ready for the full application later. Finally, let's add some additional dependencies, React Query Builder and Node SAS. So we'll do npm i React Query Builder and Node SAS, which needs to be a particular version. So we'll do at caret 4.14.1. And an, another command that I've already run, so we'll just backspace over it. Once that command is finished running, we'll need to delete some unnecessary files. So we'll open the folder up in Visual Studio Code and start deleting some files. We'll first delete setuptests.ts and app.test.tsx logo.svg and reportwebvitals.ts And then in the public folder, we can delete everything but index.html. So favicon.ico, the logo files, manifest.json, and robots.txt. Now we need to remove references to web vitals. Uh, sorry, report web vitals.ts from index.tsx. So we'll remove that reference there and room of everything on the end here and we're going to remove some references to manifest.json and the logo files from index.html we're also going to remove the favicon.ico reference save that Next, we'll modify the index.css file to add a little bit of margin to the page. 
So right here, we'll just change that margin directive to from zero to one rim. Next thing we have to do is rename app.css to app.scss and replace the contents with this line here at import tilde react query builder slash dist slash query dash builder dot scss save that now back in app.tsx we're going to have to rename our import here to scss and we're no longer have this logo file so we'll delete that one we don't need to import react because we are using the new JSX transform. Now we're ready to create a query builder. You can do this in just a few lines of code. Import query builder from React Query Builder and replace the return statement in app.tsx with the following code. So we'll start with importing from React Query Builder, if I can spell it. And replacing the return statement with our Query Builder. We'll need a fields prop, which is an array of objects that have a name and a label. So name, we'll just call this test and label, test. And we also need an onQuery change prop, which is a function, it takes a query parameter so we'll queue and then we'll just log this to the console. Okay, so this code will display the query builder in the application and allow the user to create rules and groups of rules, but with only one field. But don't worry, we'll fix that in the next lesson. It will also log the internal query representation to the console. Now we're going to start the application. So we'll go back to our command line and run npm start. Now that takes uh, just a little bit of time to get going. And there we go. We've got our query builder running. We can add rules, we can add groups of rules, we can change the values, we can change the operators. Looks like it's working. Now, what we have now is called an uncontrolled component, which means you can't control the behavior of the component with code. We want a controlled component. So we'll add the query and onQuery change props using a state variable to control the query. The state variable will need to be of type rule group type, which we can import from React Query Builder. So we'll start by declaring our state variable, query and set query. Equals use state, which we get from React. It'll be of type rule group type, which we get from React Query Builder. And this starts out as an object with an ID of root, a combinator of and, and an empty array for the rule set.
Now we'll add our query prop, which is going to be our query state variable that we declared earlier. And in the onQueryChange function, instead of logging this to the console, we'll do setQueryQ. We'll save that. Since we're no longer printing to the to the console, but we'd still like to see the output, we can print the query out to the screen in JSON and SQL formats using the format query function provided by React Query Builder. We'll discuss this function in more detail in a later lesson. For now, what we're going to do is change this output to be a fragment. And we'll add a couple of pre tags here that contain format query, which we get from React Query Builder. This first one will be the SQL representation. And the second one will be the JSON representation. Save that and then go back here and see what we've got. So the SQL representation is empty for now because our rule set is empty. But the JSON representation has our, our starting object now, as soon as I add a rule, you can see that change with the query. So our test equals empty. Let's add a value here so you can see it change there. So the SQL where clause would be this. And our internal query representation here is, is like this. Add a group of rules. And you can see it adds the parentheses appropriately. Now we'll add fields from the sample sales data set. Each field will need name and label attributes. We'll come back to it later and augment the field names and labels with some other attributes to configure the behavior of the query builder in a later lesson. Let's split this out into a separate file, fields.ts, because it can get quite large. Create a new file called fields.ts in the source folder. Now I've already got this typed up. But if you're following along with the transcript, you can get the code from there. Let's do save as fields.ts. Make sure you include them in the query builder props back in app.tsx. We'll replace the test fields that we typed earlier with the fields from our new fields.ts file. View the application and check that all the new fields are available to choose from the drop down list. And there we go. We have a working query builder now, but all the fields have the same options, meaning the operators and value editors are the defaults. What we really want to do is tailor the operators and value editors to each specific field so that users get an optimal experience. There are two ways to configure operators in React Query Builder. One, the get operators prop at the query level, and two, the operators attribute at the field level. We're going to use the get operators method in order to keep all our operator configuration in the same place. Now we'll configure the operators with the get operators prop. Once again, we'll split this out into a separate file to keep things nice and tidy in our app.tsx file. Now, once again, I've got this already typed up, so I'm just going to Save as 
socketoperators.ts. And you can get this code from the transcript. The date fields in our data set, order date and ship date, will get date related operators such as is before, is after, etc. While numeric fields will get the number related operators is greater than, is less than, etc. The remaining fields will get the default operators which we can import from React Query Builder. Once again, include the new function in the Query Builder props. Save that. View the application and make sure the correct operators are available when you choose specific fields. So if we choose order ID, that's a numeric field. So we would want to see is less than, is greater than, etc. We do, which is good. And if we choose a date field like order date, we'd want to see is before, is after, etc. Let's take our configuration to the next level. First, we'll add a Spanish translation to the Query Builder. Create a file called types.ts that exports the type language, which consists of the two strings en and es, English and Spanish, respectively. Oops. So in the source folder, we'll do a new file called types.ts. And the contents of that file, we're just going to export type language, which is going to be en or es, and save that. Add a state variable to the app component to track the language. Default the value to en to represent English. So back in app.tsx, we're going to add a state variable called language and a setter called set language that's going to be use state of type language and we're going to default that to English next Add a language selector at the top of the return statement. So right here within our fragment, we'll add a select element. The value of that select element will be the language we choose. And the onChange handler will take an event and set the language to the event dot target dot value and we need to cast that as a language type since it's just a string close that off and compose some options within the select element so the first one will be value en for English and the second one will use Spanish as the label and ES as the value and save that off. Now we can configure translations for the query builder. Create a file called translations.ts in the client source folder. The exported function should return a translations object based on the provided language. Import default translations and the translations type from React Query Builder. Now, I've already got this typed up, so we're just going to save this as translations.ts.
you'll notice that the translations export object is a record where the keys are of type language and the value is translations object. For the English key, we're exporting the default translations from React Query Builder, which are the English translations. And for the ES key, we've provided our own Spanish translations. And you can get the shape of this object from the React Query Builder source code. Include the translations in the Query Builder props back in app.tsx. We'll just set translations equal to translations with key language and save that. We have the main components set up for multiple languages and now we can change the combinators to allow different languages as well. Create a file called combinators.ts in the client source folder. So in the source folder, we'll create a file, combinators.ts. And we're going to export a const called combinators. It's going to be a record where the keys are of type language, just like our translations object. But the values are going to be of type name label pair, an array of name label pair. So this object is going to have an en key for English. And that's just going to export the default combinators from React Query Builder. And the ES key is going to export an array of objects with name and label keys. The name of this one is going to be AND and the label since this is Spanish will be E. And then the name oops how'd that get there? name or we'll have label O and then we'll just export this as the default save that and include the combinators in the query builder props back in app.tsx Combinators equals combinators, and we need to specify the language. Save that, and let's go see what our what our application looks like. Okay, you can see our language selector at the top, English to Spanish, and the tooltips are in English as well as the labels for the buttons. Unless we change this to Spanish, in which case you'll see Spanish translations. So the tooltips and the labels are all in Spanish now, even our combinators E and O. One thing you may want to do is remove the ability of users to create subgroups of rules, limiting them to creating flat, single level rule sets for some business or technical reason. You can easily remove the add group button by assigning it a function that returns null instead of a JSX element. So here in the query builder component, we'll add a prop called control elements. And it's going to be an object with a key of add group action. And we'll set that to a function that returns null. Save that. And let's go back to our application and see what changed. So you can see now we don't have an add group button. So all we can do is add rules and it creates a, a flat rule set. 
As an example of completely replacing a default component, we can change the combinator selector from a drop-down menu to radio buttons. We can copy the value selector component from the React Query Builder source code, then modify it. Create a file called combinatorselector.tsx in the client source folder. So let's create a new file called combinatorselector.tsx and I'm going to paste in the value selector code from the React Query Builder source code and we'll change the the name here to combinator selector and then we want to map over the options object here uh, to create a to create radio buttons instead of a drop-down menu. So instead of this select, we're going to return a form with class name, class name. Uh, value will take care of oops, in the options. Title is title. I'm just going to add some styling here so that it remains in line. Um, just going to do display inline block. Uh, title remains the title, and the on chain handler will will take care of in the options. So under this form object, we're going to map through options. Option with our TypeScript configuration needs to be declared here as an object with name, string, and label string. Um, optionally has an ID, so ID question mark string. So this key will will leave the same but we're returning, instead of an option object, we're going to return a fragment. So let's return a fragment from React with key equal to key. And within this fragment, we'll have a label. and an input. Now input will be of type oops type equals radio the name we'll need this to be the same for both of them so we'll just make it a constant we'll call it combinator selector the checked prop is going to equal the boolean value value equals option dot name and then our on chain handler is going to not take any parameters it's just going to handle on change option dot name Close that off. Now we're going to give it some space between the input and the label. So I'll just put a space here. And then option.label. And then after the label element, we'll also give some more space. And that's why we need the fragment. Okay. Save that off and use the new combinator selector in the app.tsx file. So back in, let's see, need to, we need to change this to import from React Query Builder. There we go. So back in app.tsx. 
we'll change the combinator selector to be our combinator selector that we defined. Save that and let's go back to our application. And you can see that the combinator selector now is radio buttons instead of a drop down menu. Now one thing I'm going to do going forward because I want to be able to create groups of rules is I'm going to remove this add group action uh, property from the control elements prop. So at the end of this lesson you should just have control elements combinator selector. In this lesson we'll be working with the built-in input types and value getters. Input types will set the type attribute of an input element and value getters will set up options for the drop-down lists. There are two ways to configure input types. One, the get input type prop at the query level, and two, the input type attribute at the field level. We'll use the field level attribute because it's simpler for our purposes. Set the input type attribute to number for order ID in all other numeric fields. So in fields.ts, we'll set the input type to number for order ID and copy that so that we can just paste it in for units sold, unit price, unit cost, total revenue, total cost, and total profit and save that. We'll leave the rest as the default, which is text, since we're going to enhance the date fields with a proper date picker in a later lesson. Now we'll set up the drop downs for fields that have discrete value lists. First, we need to define their value editor type as select. Once again, there are two ways to do this, at the query level and at the field level. We're going to use the field level attribute for this configuration. So for the field region, we want to define our value editor type as select, and we'll copy that, and use the same for item type, sales channel, and order priority, and save that. Next, we need to define their value lists and add them to the fields. Now, their value lists are kind of long, so I've got these copied already. Or I've got them typed up already. I'll copy it and paste them to the top of the file. So we have priorities, item types, and regions. So for region, the values are going to be regions. For item type, values are item type or item types. Now for sales channel, we'll just define these in line. So values is going to be an array of objects with a name and a label. So name, offline, label, offline, and online. Then for order priority, values should be priorities. Save that and view the application to make sure the lists are coming up when certain fields are selected. So let's go back to our application. Let's reload this just to reload everything and say if we select region 
we do get a drop down list of all the regions. If we select item type, we get a drop down list of the item types. If we select sales channel, we get offline and online and order priority. Critical high, medium and low. Now we'll customize the value editor component of our query builder and tailor it to the different data types. Create a React component in a file called valueEditor.tsx and use that component as your custom value editor. For now, the component should simply return null if the operator is null or not null. Otherwise, it should return the default value editor component from React Query Builder. So let's create a new file called valueEditor.tsx. And we're going to start off with const value editor equals it's going to take a props object which is of type value editor props from react query builder and that's going to let's destructure the operator from props And we need to toggle the return value to null if operator equals null or not null. So if operator equals null or operator equals not null, then we'll just return null because we don't need a value editor in this case. Otherwise, I'm going to return the default editor from React Query Builder. So we'll import this as default value editor and return it, default value editor. And we'll just spread the props object. Now we just need to export this as the default. And save it. And then we need to use that as our value editor back in app.tsx in the query builder props. So in the control elements prop, we'll choose value editor equals value editor and make sure you choose you import the one that we created not the one from react query builder save that if you like check out the react query builder source code to see what the default value editor looks like let's go to our application and refresh And if we choose is blank, which is the null operator, you can see that our value editor goes away because we returned null or is not blank. Same thing. Okay. Now we'll customize the value editor by adding a date picker for date fields. First, install the date picker component and date functions package with NPM. So let's go to our terminal, turn off the running client, and do npm i react date picker. And that doesn't come with types for TypeScript, so we'll need to also uh, install at types react date picker. and then the date effins package and that does come with types so we don't need to do anything else there okay well that's running 
We'll go back to our code. To use the date picker, modify the component in value editor.tsx to return the date picker component when field data .data type equals date. We have to wrap the date picker in an inline block div because of a quirk with the styling. If you don't wrap it, then the date picker input jumps to the next line when clicked. So we'll go back to our value editor.tsx file. And after the null checks, we're going to add if field data dot data type equals date we're going to return a date picker here but first we need to destructure field data here and we're also going to need handle on change and value I'm just going to format that real quick. There we go. So if field data dot data type equals date, we want to return a div with style display inline block. And then inside that, we'll do our React date picker. Now let's go back to our terminal and see if that's installed. It is. So we can do React date picker. And that gets imported automatically from React date picker. The on change prop will be a function that takes, oops, need an equal sign there. A parameter of a date. And runs the handle on change function. Now, if this is a valid date, we're going to import this from uh, date effins. If that's a valid date, then we're going to format it. Also import that from date effins. We're going to format D with the ISO 8601 format, which is yyy-mm-dd. Otherwise, we'll return null. Okay. Now for the value prop, that's going to be our value uh, destructured const from up above or an empty string. Now for the selected prop, Oops, equals curly braces. If we have a value, then we're going to parse. Again, import that from date effins. Parse value, uh, same format as before. And we need a context of new date for this function. Otherwise, we'll select today's date, which is new date. And close that out. And I think that does it. Now we need to set the data type to date for order date and ship date. So that'll be back in fields.ts. We'll look for order date and ship date and change their data type to date. So 
Save that and view the application to make sure the date picker is working correctly when either order date or ship date is selected. So let's go back to our application. Oh, we need to restart it. So once that comes up again, we should see a date picker when we choose order date or ship date. Oh, and we see it, but we didn't import the date picker CSS files. So let's go back to the code value editor. And we need to import React Date Picker slash dist slash React Date Picker dot CSS. Let's save that. Come back here and see if that changes anything. Let's refresh. Order date. There we go. Nice pretty date picker for order date. Ship date is the same.